Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Welcome, welcome, New Life family and friends. We're glad that you're with us today in studio today. Chris Williams, I'm sitting in for Steve. I also have with me right now Dr. Jackie Mack Harris. Hey. Join, joining us later will be Dr. Sherry Keffer. So, Jackie... You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here's the the question of the day. You and I have been able to experience something profound, and that is carrying junk on the inside and being able to offload it in conversation and relationship and not carrying the junk around anymore. It it, it really is. It's not an easy process, but it is a simple process. So if carrying the junk around on the inside is causing us so much pain and heartache, so much misery, why in the world are we not engaging in offloading that information in healthy relationship? I think it's because we've been told not to. Mm. We've been told it's rude. Um, It's impolite to make people uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This... You know, humanity just wants pain-free experiences, and yet we are creating pain in the world. We're doing things that hurt people and hurt ourselves. And so I think part of why people don't actually share with another person is because it doesn't feel like it's safe to do that. It doesn't feel safe because that other person might not like it because it's going to make them uncomfortable, but also it doesn't feel safe because I'm now being so vulnerable and naked in front of somebody. Yeah. And we've been trained to believe that that's a weakness. And isn't that the, the irony? Is that something that has been, been described as a weakness is actually the very thing that is weakening us. Yes. It's keeping us from strength. It's yes. keeping us from vitality. And I think you bring up a really good point because oftentimes what stops me from sharing something vulnerable that I'm carrying around that any one, it could be shame, mm-hmm. right? If I, if I share this difficult thing about me in my life, or if I share this sinful thing about me in my life, then you are going to reject me as much as I, if not more rejected myself. Right. Right? And it's the rejecting of self peace yeah. that is leading, right? Because you've already rejected yourself to even get to the point where you say, I can't tell them this. Yes. I can't tell them who I really am. Exactly. I can't tell them what's really going on here. Which is why we walk around complaining about imposter syndrome. Exactly. It's not that you haven't achieved. It's not that you don't deserve the role you're in. It's not that you aren't qualified for the job you're doing. It's the deep core part of who you are where you're Mm -hmm. faking it. Yeah. Right? And that you're doing it as a protective measure, right? Mm -hmm. So no shade, no shame, no judgment. We just need to realize that it doesn't do us or anybody any good to keep all that stuff inside. However, as a couples therapist, I am aware, though, that people can take Take your pain and use it yes. against you. Yeah, people can weaponize your vulnerability yeah. against you. Yeah. That doubles down the pain. Yep. And so that would double down the fear and the blocks from being able to share it. And people do it for so many reasons. I, I, I've, I had someone say to me, well, if I don't correct her, how will she ever learn? Mm-hmm. And they're they're trying to take what you've said. Well, you said you did this thing. Let me teach you a lesson about it. Yeah. And it doesn't. It's not good for relationship. It doesn't create connection. It creates division. What we want to be able to do here at New Life is help you become a safer confessional place where you do not have to carry the stuff that weighs you down on the inside. Yes. That we need to say the unsaid, talk about the untalkable. So that, again, the chatter inside of us isn't oppressing us and keeping us down. And then we're getting well and we can hand down wellness instead of continuing to pass down family trauma. Absolutely. We say it all the time. You cannot heal what you cannot see. And if we're not talking about it, we can't see it. So help us help you in being able to see the unseen and heal our hidden wounds. Yes.
It had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day, every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal. It's just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. After seven years, take just one weekend, I completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle Workshop. He said, you know, I think this is something that every man should go to. Married, dating, it was definitely life-changing. The Every Man's Battle Workshop is being held online as a one-day event Saturday, May 13th. To find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. I just can't say enough of what New Life has done for our marriage. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. Chris Williams in studio with Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Jackie Mac Harris, and we're going to go straight to the phones. We're going to go to Patty listening in Cambridge, Minnesota on the podcast. Patty, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Tell us what's going on today. Um. I've been married for 41 years, Um, 12 years into the marriage. My husband had an affair with my best friends, and they um, they had a baby. Um, And the baby is three months, three months older than my fourth child. We have five children, and we we really didn't get to see it to the end. The affair itself lasted for nine months. Um, He wasn't interested in her at all before that. Um, We. Anyway, he wasn't interested in her, and it was it was probably my fault. I mean, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. Um, I felt sorry for her. She had broken up with another relationship, but she had her eyes on my husband all along. My husband wasn't interested in her. It all just worked. It, it, it just happened. Um, so now, um, the for 28 years, I've lived not knowing whether there was a child or not, and um, simultaneously, my, my fifth child... Um, said that she wanted to know if she, she said she thought it'd be so neat to know if she had another sibling somewhere and i said that that might be a possibility and so we contacted one of um, my friend's children and they gave us the number of the son that um that he, my my husband had with this woman and um so when he was contacted he wanted to meet us and he's really very a, a nice person i thought this was going to bring closure um, but he actually moved in with us and is living with us, and his mother has married someone. And um, Anyway, he, he's been a blessing in a lot of ways, but it's also been on the back of my heart. I've always wondered if he isn't just like a, a, a person that's giving information to her or whatever. It's just an insecure feeling, kind of strange. Um, and um, we've had to introduce him to all our friends and family. And Anyways, I'm... I, I talked to my husband, you know, he's been in and out of addictions all of our married life since then, and probably before, I just didn't know about it. Um, he has sporadic hours, he's up at different times of the night, so I really can't keep up with it. I, I, so, Patty, what's, I the, what's the question for us today? My, my question is, I just feel like I'm, I'm done. I just feel like I, I just don't want to do this anymore. It's just hurtful. He, he's going in and out of addictions, pornography. Like, um, mm-hmm. He set up a camera in his office so I could keep track of him. And I said, you need help. I said, if you're sick, you need to go to a doctor. You're sick. You need to go to a doctor. And he said, I'm not ready for it. And um, I just don't know. He's, he's worried that it's going to mess him up. And we went to a, a marriage encounter weekend. We, I mean, an intensive marriage encounter thing. And I heard about it afterwards, but I shouldn't have said what I said. Mm. Anyways, I just, I'm just so tired of of this roller coaster and today i just said i i was we were eating together and i said you know um why did you marry me and he said i wanted a good christian woman so that i could have sex with them and i thought that they would want it as much as i did and i was thinking what part of you know it's all about him it's all about him yeah, so yeah. My, my thing is so why, so pat why pat petty hold on let me jump in because i Listen, unfortunately, we hear this a lot, so I think we have a really, really good picture of what's going on. Uh-huh. Okay, so how 
in that question, is your question, what can, what now do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I, I just want to say one thing before I turn this over and that is friend, there's something known as codependency and there's something known as co-addiction. And, and I don't want to get too caught up in the differences of those particular things, but you have participated in his addiction for so long that you've become addicted to his addiction. And so I love where you're at because you've been waiting for him to get recovery. And today you no longer have to. Mm -hmm. Today you can say, no, I have an addiction. I'm going to get into recovery today because I don't like what this thing's doing to my life. Yes. Sherry? Yeah, I have a little different view than Chris because I don't see it as your addiction. I actually see it as a trauma event that happened and how you coped with that was by going into denial. Girl, you've been in denial for a long time. I get it. I've been where you are. I too had a husband who sexually acted out. But part of how you've been coping at it, coping the, through the pain is by minimizing what's happened to you. Do you know why I can say that with loving confidence? Why? Because when you were talking about his affair with your best friend, you said he wasn't into her at all. <laughs> Yeah. It's painful, yeah. sweet one. Yeah. It's painful. Like there's a part of me that wants to wrap my arms around you. And I can only imagine the type of family you grew up in yeah. where you weren't seen, you weren't heard, where your pain wasn't acknowledged. And you just had to bounce out through life, through painful things. And nobody really sat down and asked you, how are you feeling? How are you doing? with all of this. It was your best friend. And yes, he was into her. They had a baby together. Mm -hmm. But that's hard to take in because it's a double betrayal. It's a betrayal of your husband, the sacred vow, the man that you thought was going to protect you. And then it's your, it's your best friend, your sister, best sister, sisterhood. I mean, it's a breach at such a deep level that it lanced your heart and your heart has been limping through life saying it's okay when it's not okay. I don't believe it's okay. And I, I, I guess, I guess I should clarify. She became my best friend when she was interested in my husband because I have another friend that was her best friend. But, and she told me that the woman had asked questions about my husband and what were our problems. And my husband really wasn't interested in her. It was me that insisted that she go somewhere with us so that she could, you know, be away from her pain when she broke up with her relationship. He wasn't interested in her. Honestly, he wasn't. But you said you feel but, sorry yeah. for her. So let me, let me, uh, and this yeah. might feel really uncomfortable. I want, I want to know about you. Okay. Grow, growing up, growing up. Did you have to take care of one of your parents? Were you a special child in the home that, you know, was regarded as somebody who, like you got brownie points, you got love, you got affection, you were appreciated because you were a caretaker? I was, I was a middle kid. My parents were both only children. I was surrounded with only children. And I, I was the buffer between my parents. My mother would come to me and complain about my dad and cry on my shoulder. And, okay. Um, and she blamed me for the divorce. It wasn't my fault. I know that. But he was into pornography as well. I married my father. So, except that he doesn't have a temper like my dad. Crazy. But, but you're the daughter of sexual betrayal. And your mom mm -hmm. t told you things that shouldn't have been told to her daughter. You were made special, but it was a bad situation. You should have never been put in that situation. It also formed the way you view the world and relationship, which then connects for me with what Chris was saying. It, it's not the addiction to this in the marriage necessarily, but just in your life. Like you've lived making this okay for people. And... 
addressing it from the perspective of it's a problem, but not really. The, it, it, it's a it, terrible problem, and I think it's with me. I want to know what I need to do for me because I know I can't fix it. There them. you go. I need to know what I can do for myself to get healed. I don't want to be this way anymore. That's the only thing you have control over is what you do for you. Yeah. You going into recovery and starting to pay attention to why you allow what you allow. So when your husband says, yeah. I'm not ready, it's going to mess me up, what do you say? I say, well, you can't be more messed up than you already are, and I'm just going to have to get help. You're going to have to take care of it because I'm going to have to do. I'm going to. You're going to have to take care of me to take care of me because I can't. I can't live like this anymore. I love what you said. I'd change one thing. I need to take care of me because you've harmed me. Yeah. You're harming me. You're still harming me. And him being ready is not your problem. No. Because he'll never be ready. That's what EMB is for. EMB is the place that men go when they're not ready so they can help them wake up to mm-hmm. what's happening in their world in a very loving, compassionate, non-judging way, but they wake up. And he's not wrong about mm-hmm. it's going to ch- do something to his life. <laughs> it right? will, yeah. It is going to turn it upside down, inside out, topsy-turvy, and he likes what he has. It works for him, even if it's yeah. painful for you. It's been painful yeah. for you all these years, and he's not ready because it's going to damage his life, and yours is not damaged. Yours is okay. And no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. So, Patty, it's, I'm really, really impressed with your courage today. Really, I'm really impressed with your fed up. We, we need a, we need a lot more fed up around here, right? But you got to you got to stay with it. Yeah, and so yeah. the fed up needs to lead to action, doing something different. And so I absolutely do want you to check out our restored workshop. And I don't believe okay. it's coming up for a few months here. But before you go to Restored, uh, we're going to send you a copy of Sherry's book, Intimate Deception, Healing the Wounds of Sexual Betrayal. Because I think there's something that's going on. And I mentioned the word addiction because I wanted to wake you up out of denial. You know, and, and to say that, you know, well, I'm not okay with this. I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but your behavior is betraying you. Your behavior is telling you that you're okay with, that you're tolerating the intolerable. So now we're going to help your body move into a, to catch up with your heart and your mind to say that like, no, my actions are now going to say this is not okay. And and be careful to not let anyone over spiritualize this experience for you. Like he chose you because you were the good Christian girl. He got exactly what he wanted. And you probably chose him because he was a good, I'm doing bunny ears under the table, Christian man. And and all either of those are our human beings. Mm-hmm. And we are all fallible and we all struggle and we all have challenges. None of us are perfect. And you being a good Christian woman did not protect you from the pain of this sexual betrayal. You do get to say, no, this isn't okay. I don't deserve this and I will no longer tolerate it. Well, that and, doesn't take away your faith in Jesus. Yeah, and Patty, when you made that description of him, him, my heart sank in my stomach. Because take it at face value. When you hear a person say this, I want a good Christian woman I can have sex with and wants to have sex with me as much as I want to have sex. On what planet does that make sense? On what right. planet is that health? And intimacy. I asked him. I said, "What what part of it was for anyone but yourself?" I mean, that's very selfish. But he made it clear but, but it was I, it wasn't about yeah, anyone else. It, he was real. He was yeah. real clear. People yeah. will show you who they are, and he said, "That's what I wanted." But unfortunately, yeah. that's that's the case for a lot of young Christian men. They have been told, "Find a good Christian woman, and then you could have all the sex you want." Well, and and let's just say this. Let's call that out for exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. That is spiritualizing. Objectification, sexual objectification of women. Yes, that thank is you. just straight up what it is. Mm-hmm. I can't see it any other way than it's that. It's the church's version. Yeah, of sexual objectification of yeah. women. It, that that is cruelty. Wow. That is evil. We don't want to do that. And grooming. Quite yeah. honestly, I have a student who's doing a um, uh, dissertation right now on grooming and, and uh, adjusting the definition to include the effects it has on the woman or on the person who was groomed. And the effects it has is it convinces you 
to go along with what they're asking for because then you're being a good, kind, compassionate, caring, loving Christian wife. Um, yeah. So, Patty, part of what we're doing here is that un- taking away the scales of all these years, that with the defenses that we've built up around denial, that Sherry is inviting you into this new way. It can be scary. And we want you to get the, the, the support that you deserve, the support that you need. Again, we're going to send you a copy of Intimate Deception. Um, a- along with that, you know, Dr. Sherry has a lot of resources that are available on her website as well. We do too here at New Life Restored. So begin your recovery journey today. Don't wait. Yeah. And, and this is for all of us. There are things in our life that we're tolerating the intolerable. And it just takes 20 seconds to wake up and to say no more and begin to do something different. Help us help you do something different. We'll be right back. We went to the intimacy and marriage in uh, 2019. We were both done. This is Steve Arterman. Do you feel like your marriage is done? New life can help. We believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. Our Intimacy and Marriage Workshop examines the various types of intimacy, spiritual, emotional, and physical, as well as the challenges of experiencing true intimacy. The next Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is July 28th to the 30th in Washington, D.C. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more or go to newlife.com. 1-800-639-5433. Don't settle for a miserable marriage, or even one that's just okay. It's possible to experience a new level of intimacy and have a great marriage. The transformation phenomenal, and it's transformed our lives so much. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Chris Williams on coaching. Oftentimes I get asked, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? The biggest difference between the two is that a therapist is going to be looking for a diagnosable mental health condition, whereas a coach is going to look at a particular issue and help a person work through that. If you need a coach, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. If you're looking at an issue in your life that you just kind of want to change, whether it be your weight or leadership or other areas of behavioral patterns, check out coaching. There can be some really, really helpful things for you. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 and talk to us about getting a new life coach. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. Again, Chris Williams here, Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Jackie Mac Harris, and now we're going to go to Shar in Cleveland, Ohio. Shar, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Welcome, Hi. welcome. I- I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you? Um, we're doing well. Hey, we get to hang out that together, is... man. This is this is a really cool thing, right? <laughs> I, I'm sure it is. It's probably the best in the world. It is. So, sure, yeah. But what's going on with you? How can we help you, Shar? Well, the reason why I called in is because today, today, before I came to work, my husband of 22, 23 years decided that it'll be best if we um, separated him, get his own place, and I stay in the house, and he would help me for a few months. Now, with that being said, um, I believe that it is for the best because there's been pornography, affairs, and different things of that sort. So I I do agree with it that that should be done. And I also heard something on the show before that you should go through the pain and not go around it to avoid it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what what to do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what what to do with that. Yeah, emotions or something. But I mean, I I agree. I definitely agree that that's the way it should be right now. But um. 
I don't know. <laughs> do, do you, are you questioning whether or not you are going through it? Do you feel like maybe you're avoiding in some way or, or not yes. letting yourself feel the pain of it? Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. And I'm wondering, because I know that it was not a good situation all of those years. He's done every man's battle and everything. Um, and I, I know it's for the best, but I want to make sure that I go through the pain and not go around and try to avoid it. And then it sneaks up on me one day. Mm -hmm. You so know, that's what you, I'm mm -hmm. when I think about you I'm proud of you right um, wanting to wake up to what's really happening it, it's it's reminiscent of Patty's call and I, I didn't say this with Patty but I'll say it with you sadly when one person in the relationship is in denial mm -hmm. in denial when yeah. they're minimizing ignoring making excuses like I don't want to go there mm -hmm. and the other person is in sexual deception it's like yes. cancer in a relationship. Like the mm -hmm. worst stuff happens and it keeps mm -hmm. happening because when the partner who's in denial is not looking at or addressing or being aggressive, like you would if there was cancer in your body, mm -hmm. what happens is the cancer just grows. So now your husband's like, well, hey, I just want to separate. I want my own place. Because, you know, he's just wanting women to come and go. He doesn't want to have yes, to work as hard to keep the secrets that he's keeping. And yes, so do you see how that is without addressing the issue? Like, I, EMB is wonderful. It's a great beginning. Mm -hmm. But if that person isn't going through and going deeper into their addiction and getting in with a good counselor and getting a sponsor and getting into a group where there are other men that are holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. well, well, and that's it. Every, every man's battle is a way to walk through a door into a new way of life. It's well said. Mm -hmm. But if we don't stay on the other side of that door, we just walk right back out and go back to the old way. And, and I think that sometimes people get to programs like Every Man's Battle and learn... Um, you know, this stuff is real and it's true. This is who I'm at, who I am. Or, or it's he, too scary to change. Yeah. It, it's too scary or they just don't want to mm -hmm. for yeah. what, for ever, yeah. whatever the reason is. Well, it's and called he, sexual entitlement. Right. It's he, sexual entitlement. He, I want to do what I, I want to do, do even I though do. I know it's not okay, but I'm doing it because I want to do yeah. it. And there are people who don't believe it's not okay. They believe they should be yeah. able to do whatever they want to do to whoever they want to do it to when they want to do it. And him having his own apartment will certainly make that easier. It will get you out of maybe some of the drama of it. But then what? You said he would. He said he would help you for a few months. What? What's your yes, concern? What can? What is there a question we can answer for you? I don't have a concern other than I know it's for the best and I know that this should be done because of everything that's been going on throughout the entire marriage. But I want to make sure that I handle this emotionally, mentally, and psychologically. Yeah. I yeah. know I've yeah. grown from, from a very, from a place that I was to where I care about myself mm -hmm. more and my esteem and everything. So it's like I have been preparing myself for this to happen, but I want to make sure that I don't avoid any emotions, that I go through the pain, and I don't avoid it and go around it. Well, yeah. Just you, Even saying, I, just you yeah. saying that to me says you're already doing that. You're already mm -hmm. acknowledging okay. <laughs> that those things yeah. exist, whether you're experiencing them right now or not, but you have an awareness that I'm going to feel this. This is going to, this is going yeah. to cost me. Is the separation going to lead to divorce? Well, okay, so let me let me jump in here. So what we there's a mantra in the recovery movement called one day at a time, right? Okay. As we're moving out of painful places, there could mm -hmm. be initially that sense of relief. Oh, mm -hmm. this 800 pound gorilla is off of my back. But then there's these other waves 
of the experience that comes in, the waves of regret or the waves of pain, the waves of frustration, the waves of loss and, and grief. And we're going to go ahead to a break right now, but we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about those waves and how we encounter them. And those sets of waves can be surprising. And we'll talk more about that right, right after this. My husband was involved with uh, pornography addiction. He was unfaithful. I called the wedding off. He stepped out on the marriage and ended up having a child. The Restore Workshop is designed for a woman dealing with a man's sexual addiction issues. My husband is a recovering sex addict. There were strip clubs other ladies. If you've been affected by betrayal, an emotional or physical affair, or pornography, the Restore Workshop will equip you with support and tools to help you through. Restore has empowered me and has given me the tools to work through my anger, work through my pain, work through my confusion, and help me realize that I am worthy. Being here and being surrounded by people who get it has given me my power back. The Restore Workshop is being held online Saturday, June 10th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Thank you, Restore. You have changed my life forever. I have given to New Life regularly because I have so many people that I am referring to New Life who so benefit from the ministry. I just can't imagine what would happen in my area if New Life wasn't available to us. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of all eight 100-day devotionals, including 100 days of prayer, 100 days of freedom from depression, and 100 days of peace. There are also ongoing benefits like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, discounts on workshops, and quarterly online meetings with Steve. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. We've been talking with Char, and and Char, I think Jackie brought up something that was really important as we're just talking Mm -hmm. about this on break, and that is they're actually, in a strange way, maybe cause of celebration here. Yes. I felt guilty about that part, too. I did think about that. That's what I was thinking. I said, I think part of this call is that she's concerned that she feels like this is something to celebrate. But you've been struggling and suffering and trying to do the work in this relationship. He's done every man's battle. Um, Mm -hmm. This is your freedom dance. Yeah. And like Chris was saying, as you like, you know, things change and he actually moves out and the three months are over and you're trying to figure out how to pay your own mortgage without this. Like as the days pass, the feelings may come and sometimes it's going to be a big huge wave and it might knock you down but you Mm -hmm. are going to get back up Mm -hmm. you're going to lean into your support yeah Mm -hmm. there's there's help there's there are groups you know you could do snm so that you have some support for your recovery work um and then dr sherry has all kinds of resources on her website Mm -hmm. and her book Mm -hmm. is Intimate, intimate deception, deception. Intimate healing deceptions. the wounds of sexual betrayal. My my one concern, Char, as you're celebrating, I don't want you to heal broken, mm-hmm. because what happened? I, I healed broken, and so mm-hmm. I I jumped out of the frying pan into the fire, and I was in mm-hmm. multiple relationships after that with addicts because I didn't do my own work. Mm-hmm. to go deeper and identify ask I didn't learn how to ask the hard questions and I just don't want you to repeat this yeah in your life so so dig deep girl don't heal broken get the goods Definitely. and and don't mm-hmm. repeat what you're walking out of and then Chris says something on the break too um, your husband is setting the terms of this and so remember you have a voice as well and okay. how how 
be mindful of how it will impact your life as as well as his. Don't let... I forget about that part. Yeah, yep. mm. you you have a voice here. He don't he doesn't get to be the sole determiner of the terms of a, of agreement. So have your voice. Shar, three quick things. Okay, here's your marching orders. Okay. First thing, you're going to seek out a therapist who okay. is who has expertise in betrayal trauma. Okay. Okay. You're going to read Sherry's book, Intimate Deception. Okay. And you're going to look for recovery support for those who have gone through sexual betrayal. Okay. All right. Okay. And and, and uh -huh. that that will ensure as the waves of the waves of the different emotions and experiences come, you have the support to eventually ride those waves to the shore of your safety and security. So, thank you so much for calling in today, Shar, and we have Larry with us. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. I've got a testimony about this radio program <clears throat> that covers all the bases I want to talk about here. So let me read it so you can get on with the phone calls. A lady uh, who's known us for over 30 years, this ministry, had troubles and challenges with her daughter's behaviors and fears, went to the doctor. He said, you got to get into therapy. They didn't have the money, so she went to the church. And then she says this, I spent much time on my knees with tears streaming out, with, with tears streaming, crying out to, to God for help. As I was driving one afternoon, your radio program came on, a glimmer of hope. Out of desperation one day, I called your number, and the most loving, understanding person on the other end of the line ministered to me. I needed, my, I needed help with my own depression as well as help strengthening my trust in God to do his work in me, as well as being able to help my children in my marriage. I learned so much from new life through listening to the radio program, receiving books, information in the mail. Later in my life, when I was earning some money, I began to support new life and have been supporting you ever since because I believe your ministry helps so many people that it should never go away. During a rough patch in our marriage, we both grew back together with God's help and the wonderful books and workbooks from New Life. Now I'm a grandmother, grandchildren, with some emotional issues that I feel comfortable counseling from all that I've learned over the years. Thanks with all my heart, and may God continue to bless your ministry. So folks, we need your help financially. Um, I hope you'll realize how important this radio ministry is. Um, and she says we should never go away. We actually are concerned about that ourselves, so we're going to be doing a campaign on some stations where we may cancel to help everybody learn how they can still listen to us. There are so many avenues to listen other than just getting on a local radio station. So stay tuned. We love you. We don't want to go away, and we need your help. So thanks. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. And again, um, www.newlife.com. You can donate there. And um, yeah, we need your help. So let us keep God's work of hope and healing in life's hardest places going forward. And with that, we're going to keep it going forward with Ruthie in Washington, D.C., listening on WAVA on WAVA. Ruthie, are you there? Yes, I am, Chris. All right. Good to hear your voice. How are you doing today? Pretty good. And um, my question is, um, before reacting to a, a triggering violation of my boundaries, um, I took some time. I took three hours and did some self-care mm. before I responded. And it, it wow, it, it's progress for me. And I just <laughs> wanted to ask, <laughs> is, there an, is there a possible downside of waiting three hours before... I yell at somebody or quit my job, stuff like that. Well, if the result is you yelling at someone or quitting your job, there is no downside. But I have a I have a question for you, Ruthie. You you did something that uh, the three of us sitting here was just music to our ears. We're all smiling. We're all just like just this like, is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Cheshire cat smiles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what exactly did you do in those three hours? Because I think it be it could be helpful for a lot of people. I went to an AA meeting. Mm -hmm. I got my coffee. Um, I, I tried to, to not get upset. I almost did a, a Christian meditation, but I didn't get that far in it. Um, and I, I was just able to be calm. And 
for me, this is really a, a progress. This is really incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and when so, when the three hours was over and you got to have a conversation with the person, how did it go? Or did you need to have the conversation after the three hours? Oh, I needed to have a conversation. Um, it, it wasn't real satisfying, mm-hmm. but um, it's, I took it as far as I could with this person. Um, and I'm glad I did it. And and uh, it led to another conversation um, with another person. And that part went really well. That's great. That's think- so great. And, you know, we, we can only manage our parts. We have no control over how people respond. But you did, I think, a very important thing. You stopped and thought about what you were feeling, took care of yourself, and didn't just immediately respond out of emotion or out of anger. You gave yourself time for your nervous system to settle down so you weren't just responding out of survival, but you were actually able to talk about the thing you wanted to talk about. You felt like you were able to speak and be heard. And whether it went the way you wanted it to go or not, you still showed up the way you wanted to show up. You didn't let someone else control or puppet master you. And so I can't see the downside. Well, and I have a question. Previously, before you learned the tools of recovery and self-care and managing your own emotions if you let's go previous to all of that stuff before you got that stuff and the if triggering event happened what would it have looked like back then oh i probably would have overeaten mm-hmm. i probably would have broken some pencils that's what i used to do when i get angry and i i probably would have carved out a deep hole in my soul to put resentment in a mm, new resentment wow wow god is god helped me with this chris this this is really unusual behavior for me and i have been praying but it's it's it, it, it just got to a boiling point for sure but it may you know? be it may be unusual behavior for you but this is the usual you mm. It's not unusual anymore. Yeah, because it's this the is better the better you. Yeah, this is what this is the this is the God designed Ruthie right here because you're invested in your recovery, you're invested in your health and in your and relationships and your growth. Because yeah. you it. showed yeah. up as you in that relationship. Yeah, and you ran to people for yeah. support. Yes. Like AA, you went yeah. to a meeting. Mm-hmm. What a great place yeah. to let the fuse like defuse around other people that you yeah. trust yes so, so proud I, I'm, of gonna, you, I'm gonna use a steveism in a world of ruthless people be a ruthie uh, <laughs> we, yeah. we need nice. more ruthies yes. ruthie we're gonna send Woo-hoo. you a copy of henry cloud's trust we that it's such a gift uh that the information in that book you are such a gift to us you're a gift to the world around you keep working your recovery we'll be right back my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries. We know that Christian counseling changes lives. We hear evidence of that every day. My relationships with my husband, with my friends, with my family are much richer and deeper and honest. 
particularly my relationship with God, I see Him in a more accurate form and begin to trust Him more. There's joy and there's peace because I have the internal tools that I can trust. So it's radically changed my life. I'm just not even the same person. Our nationwide network of licensed Christian counselors means there is help available near you. Take the leap, jump in, and go for it. It's changed my life completely. You don't have to be stuck where you are, but you can't really expect to change unless you take action. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. It could be the start of a whole new life for you. Christian Counseling works, and we can help. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE today. Someone who cares is always there at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. Again, Chris Williams, Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Jackie Mac Harris, and Alan calling in from Freedom, New York, listening on Sirius XM. Alan, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Well, what's going on today and how can we help you? Oh, I just had a little question, and it doesn't sound very serious, and maybe it'd be good for you folks, or you'll have to, won't have to have something so heavy. But anyway, uh, it's a grandpa question. I got 17 grandkids. I went to a divorce in 2009, and so sometimes my grandkids will say, Grandpa, you and Nana broke up, right? And what I want to say is, yeah, and why don't you ask her why we did, but I don't. Uh, I guess uh, kind of protective or or what would you say, uh, my reputation. You know, it, when you don't say nothing, it's like a 50-50 thing, and it really wasn't. I didn't want the divorce. Uh, I wanted to be married for the rest of my life, but I guess I'm just what I don't are, know. Al, are that. you are you wondering how to talk to the kids about it, or if you should? Yeah. Can could you just tell us what happened briefly in the divorce? I want to know a little bit more around the wounding of your heart. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, she was messing around with her boss, and and uh, we got divorced. And then a year or so later, she married him, and and uh, well, he's gone from her life now too. But so I guess yeah, you know, is are you? Do you still great. talk with her? No, I never talked to her. Okay. So you know what, Alan? I, I um, first off, I'm sorry about the pain of the sexual betrayal that you experienced. You didn't deserve it. it. Wasn't your fault that she had an affair with her boss and then married him? I mean, devastating. That changed everything about your dream, your world, and it changed everything about your story going forward. And I, too, have a story like you. And I had to come to a place where I wasn't afraid to share a piece of that story in a package that I felt comfortable enough with. Because I, too, have nieces. I have grandnieces now. And so sometimes they're curious. I have a book out, you know. And they're, they're like, well, what happened to Uncle Connor? And... And what I did was I came up with a phrase that I felt comfortable with, that I could say. I wasn't slandering. I wasn't giving misinformation, and it wasn't about indicting him. I just said, you know, I'm sad. What happened in with your Nana, there there was some um, unfaithfulness in our relationship. Your your Nana was unfaithful, and uh, sadly... I wanted to be married to her, but but she was unfaithful to me, and so we divorced. 
Now, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's good advice. Uh, I try not to say anything negative, so I probably avoid it. Yeah. But we can be honest, and I think it's important because we're teaching kids to trust what they are feeling and to trust the people in their lives who are, the, you know, their, their grandparents, their parents, the people who love and protect them. And they have access to far more information than we ever did. They see the world differently, and they're curious. If they don't get answers about things and learn to make meaning from the people who love them, they will get it from other places. And, and you're right, if you don't tell your own story, then somebody else gets to tell the story for you. And so coming up with some way to... Uh, be honest about what happened, but also not to, um, to to make a monster out of the other person. You're trying to protect yourself, protect the family, protect the kids' minds, but they are probably, uh, with 17 of them, you probably have a full range of them. So I would say be careful to make sure that it's age-appropriate. And what Dr. Sherry just shared is, is truth and age-appropriate really at any age. If they don't know what... Um, unfaithful is they'll learn as they get older or they'll go look that word up or they might ask you to clarify but I think we have to do a better job of telling the truth to our kids so that they don't repeat the same traumas mm -hmm. yeah. they will continue to make the same mistakes because they don't know their family's story mm. they are learning how to be in relationship from Disney and that's not going to prevent them from having this happen in their own life but if as they get older, they may have more questions what that impact to you was. And, and so the, the conversation will probably change as they get older. But right now, I agree with Dr. Sherry. Just find a way to be honest about what happened and that you're sad about it. It wasn't it wasn't what you desired. It wasn't how you wanted to live your life. But it happened. And the choice was to divorce. Yeah. And, and Alan, I want to commend you for your instinct your instinct to withhold this vitriol or defensiveness and putting that on your grandkids. That, that's really, there's a lot of wisdom there. But there's also a lot of important information there, and that means this. You're still hurt. There is still resentment, and it makes sense. But I want to invite you to do more work on healing the hurt and resolving the resentment. Because the story becomes more clear to you and to them and to everyone around when you're doing it from a place of resolve and not a place of resentment. When you're doing it from a place of healing and you're not doing it from a place of hurt. And I'm going to send you a resource because it has helped so many guys in your situation that I've worked with in my office. And it is Sherry's book, Intimate Betrayal. And though it is written a lot of times from a, a female or a wife's perspective, there are immutable or, or universal truths here that are true for everyone who has experienced a betrayal trauma. Right, Sherry? Yeah. yeah. A, a intimate deception, healing the wounds of sexual betrayal. I've had a number of guys reach out to me who are just like you, Alan, and they've read the book. And they've been so great to say, there's a, there's a few things I would have changed. Like, you know, I, I was way more angrier than you. You didn't really talk a lot about the angry. Or, or mm. you know, there were just other things that are, are really unique to men. Or you didn't really talk about the part of how I fought for her. I gave everything up. I, 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 I went down, like, with every breath. Like, you didn't really talk about that. And I see those patterns in men that they, yeah, that's good. they will fight to the death in order to hold on to that woman that they love. And there's nothing shameful about that. This is the woman you wanted to be with for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. And she was stolen, taken. She left you. She betrayed you. But I love what Chris said because I can tell there's just a, there's a boil in there. And, and maybe, Alan, why you said today about, like, maybe I'll give you something lighter because there's been some heavy conversations. But you're right. There's been some heavy conversations on this call about infidelity. Yeah. And that has to touch your heart. Alan, thank you so much for calling in. We're going to send you that resource. We're going to send you Intimate Betrayal, Healing the Wounds of Sexual Betrayal. Intimate it, deception. It, it's okay. <laughs> I always get to it. One thing I want to say, 
friends, we got to learn to tell the most honest version of ourselves and our stories to ourselves and each other. It helps. So we'll see Thanks you next time. Listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend. Watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.